Uh, here we're looking at the uh, time and distance uh, graph or diagram that helps in uh, creation of uh, timetables for uh, train and, and surface transport networks. Can be used for passenger or for goods trains, it doesn't really make any difference. Uh, the program I'm using is called uh, J Train Graph. I'll give links uh, to where you can get it. The only disadvantage is it is in uh, German, uh, but with Google Translate you can do a lot these days. So I'm going to use that uh, uh, using Excel or a spreadsheet. You could you could do this. Then you uh, that's a little bit more complex, but it can be done. And um, Michel Bouchard. Uh, in a video f f by Chris uh, Chris Lyons, C L V N or something, and I'll, I'll give the link on the uh, on below where you can see that. So it can be done in a spreadsheet as well, and there are other programs that you could probably buy. But this one is open source, freely available for uh, for use. The time and distance to diagram is you example that you see here of my uh, layout. The uh, distance is across the top and the time is vertical. <clears throat> As a train moves along the track then of course the time increases and the distance increases. So the the angle here of the line determines the speed or the speed that the average speed the train will travel between two places will determine the angle of the line. So part of the function of the, uh, the time and distance diagram is to determine uh, train separation but also perhaps uh, connection points. We see here a red line of the commuter train which stops here at, at Eindhoven but at the same time there's an intercity stopping coming from the other direction going this way. Uh, so often timetables are planned around uh, connections at, at certain main stations. Um, so it's a very useful diagram. It's, uh, it's graphically very, uh, very, very easy to see uh, train separation. If you went to a, to a tabular timetable from which this is uh, gener generated, then that would look something like like this. A lot of a lot of numbers showing the what the train is doing when it's arriving at and when it's leaving a particular uh, stop, but it's extremely difficult to interpret this information in terms of uh, of train separation, connection points, and uh, whether trains are going to uh, to run into each other. Uh, what I'm showing here is the end result of uh, some work on developing the timetable for train movements on on the layout. And this is all the activity during the day. Of course, that didn't happen just in one shot. It was an iterative process of building uh, each uh, train's uh, activity one by one and then tuning it so that the trains had uh, had some separation etc. And here we have it single train which explains what's uh, what its journey is. Actually we can see that it's coming from the Shadow Station, North Holland, traveling down, it's stopping at Amsterdam for a little while, then it's moving on, stopping at Eindhoven, moving on, stopping at Venlo. And this little area here is the reversing loop, which the train is now ready here at Venlo to start the return journey. So later on, the journey is returned, stopping at Eindhoven, stopping in Amsterdam, to the shadow area. So that's one, that's one train. Later on, an hour later or half an hour later, it may repeat the cycle again and do that a couple of times during the day. So that would be one set of lines on the, on the diagram. Uh, another example of a single train. Here I've split out uh, what the commuter train uh, does. 
This is what it looks like graphically. And you see immediately then how easy it is to read what uh, this train does instead of a bunch of uh, numbers in a timetable. This is the, uh, the other commuter train that's running on the layout. It does a very simple uh, shuttle service starting at Almir, stopping at Eindhoven, going to Amsterdam, stopping at Eindhoven, going to Velsen for the steel workers, coming back to Amsterdam, to Eindhoven and then back to Almere. And it'll do this a number of times during the day. Okay, here's the timetable for the three trains we've been looking at. Here we have our graphical representation of that timetable of the three, tr three separate trains that we, we just looked at. So we've got the green, the commuter train, which you can now see in here. You've got the red commuter train doing its backwards and forwards zigzag and you've got the intercity which simply does a run from one end and then back again. So what you're looking at is here is a connection points. You can see the intercity is connecting here with the uh, the green commuter train here at Amsterdam and uh, so this is you can see there's a reasonable separation between the lines. They're not bunched up together um, there are no collisions as far as we can, we can see where lines would, would cross going in the same direction. Um, and you can see the activity at Almere here has been spread out in a reasonably even manner here and that there is more activity here at Velsen, particularly in the morning for the, for the workers. And so that's how you build up the, uh, the, the, the timetable for the complete layout. Okay, here's our complete day's worth of timetable with all the trains included. And now the question arises how to plan for additional trains uh, during the day on this network. Okay. Here we have a diagram with trains traveling in only one direction. Basically by deleting all the trains that were traveling in the other direction. So what we have here are lines only going from south to north, or in this case from right to left on the diagram. Only trains going in the same direction are shown on the diagram. Now, what this then allows is it allows you to see at a glance where trains can be stuck into the, into, the, into the plan. It's basically anywhere between these two, between two parallel lines. Now we have uh, freight shuttles going from Venlo to Kaifuk at Amsterdam. So immediately we can see here that there's a nice big gap between this red line and this green line. And we can easily stick in a shuttle here going from Venlo which is, is where it would start. It's not going to stop anywhere on the way, so it'll be a straight line. And it'll get to Amsterdam here, and it won't interfere with any of the other trains that are on, uh, in the timetable. So here's a time and distance uh, diagram of going from north to south, or in simple terms, from left to, to right. So we've only got trains going from left to right on this diagram. Everything else has been deleted. And here we have the same uh, query. We have uh, extras uh, that we need to send off. The shuttle from Amsterdam to Venlo, for instance. Well, there's a nice big gap here where we could send it off in the morning, around 7.30. There's a, there's a gap here where we could send it off. And really, there are half-hour gaps here where we could send it, we could send it off straight behind the uh, the uh, auto sleep the sleeper train because it's not going to stop either so it can go in there so with these two graphs one going one way one going the other in your in uh, in front of you you can immediately uh, see where trains uh, extra trains can be added very useful feature i think of the uh, graphical representation in the uh, time and distance uh, diagram yeah, this is uh, the setup for uh, 
monitoring activities during all the testing of the automation, the timetables. You can see the full timetable there. Time and distance, the fast clock, a large clock visible from any part of the room, and the maintenance screen to see what's going on.